Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to go over Cura supports. I'm going to go over the two that you guys probably already know of, uh, which is just your normal and your tree supports. And tree supports is one that I use probably the most common, but I'm also going to go over one that you might not know much about, and it's under experimental settings at this point, but it's conical supports. It's used to reduce the uh, amount of filament used and print time for some options where if you have a 3D object that has a large opening at the bottom, uh, it basically works by just creating a smaller footprint on the actual base of the build plate until you get to a point where it needs the support and then it kind of widens out. I'll go over all of that when we go over to the computer. I'll walk you through a couple examples and go over those in a bit more detail. Um, but I did find it to be pretty useful for some of the prints, so I wanted to go over that. If you have any questions about this video or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so we're here in Cura, and I wanted to talk about supports today. I did a video in the past covering custom supports that I will link to in the description below. I'll briefly mention those in here as well, but I really wanted to focus on the types of supports and then talk about what they're used for and when you should be using them. So there are three main supports right now, two of which are under normal settings at this point. One of them is still experimental. You have normal tree support and conical support. Uh, tree support was under experimental a couple versions back, but I think it was moved out in like 4.7 or 4.8. Um, conical is still under experimental, and then normal is obviously normal. Uh, so we'll kind of run through each of them and talk about those in a bit more detail and when you might want to use them, and then talk about a couple advantages of them. All right, so first let's talk about normal. Let me go ahead and slice this with normal supports with the build placement being everywhere. What we're going to see is really a lot of filament being used and some patterns that might not be the best for your prints. All right, so I went ahead and sliced this and changed the color scheme to line type so we can see what we're looking at here. And what it's doing is it's supporting supports basically everywhere that there is going to be any type of bridging or anything, which in a lot of cases is fine, but you're adding... Uh, typically a decent amount to the print time. Uh, in some cases, tree supports might use more uh, filament and time. It just depends on it. But the main thing I wanted to point out here is it's basically filling in everything, which makes it extremely difficult to remove, where tree supports in some cases might take a little bit longer to print, but it's going to be easier to get off, which is really the advantage there. Uh, I also wanted to make a note here. Uh, the main thing I really change with support is going to be the support placement when I'm going between the different types here. It, in this example, I use this one specifically because it's got vents. This is supposed to all be open here. And same with uh, this top vent here. As you can see, with it being set to everywhere, that's all blocked due to support. So if you actually put the fan over here on the right, it's going to be blocked. You're not actually going to get any air to the other side because of the supports, and there's no way to remove those. But if we switch those to just touching build plate, which in most cases will meet your needs, um, all of that is going to be open as it's expected to be. So you actually won't have any interference with airflow or anything like that. But it's still um, touching the bottom like it was before, basically in every other spot. So if anywhere that a support could be touching the build plate, it's still going to have it in place. But if we go over to tree supports here, Uh, you want to make sure that it does have a support density. Typically, I have it set to 10, but sometimes it zeroes out, so it's worth mentioning that. Um, but it's going to create that tree structure touching the build plate. Uh, so in some models, it'll use more filament, and some it'll use less. So it's really worth kind of taking a look at the individual model when you're printing it to see which one makes sense. Um, but it is a lot easier to remove. So if you're looking here, uh, when it goes up to this point, it's barely touching some of these overhangs, so it's going to give it the support it needs for the print, but it's going to be a lot easier to come off. Right, so let's switch models and talk about that a little bit more. All right, so I brought in the Baby Yoda model, and I did a quick slice on it with tree supports. And you can see here it's creating that tree structure around it to give it the support it needs around the arms. Uh, but it does come off a lot easier because it's not really touching in all the spots. I'm using this model specifically because this is a hard one to get supports off if you're doing standard supports. And this is also one that absolutely needs supports because if you're going 
down a little bit here if you get to where the finger is on the left you'll see that if you don't have supports it kind of just starts printing it right in the middle and thin air so here it's got the tree support so it's going to create that overhang and then the finger but if you try to print this without support it's this is just going to be a string there's nothing to support it that said even with the tree supports this is difficult to take off um, so it's worth it might be worth printing uh, with custom supports using tree or something like that uh, i created a video covering the custom supports specifically with this model uh, i'll link to that in the description below um, but i don't want to spend too much time in this video covering that because it's not quite the purpose though it is a support all right so let's switch this over to uh, normal really quick and slice it I switched to normal and left it at touching build plate to show you that even in this example, uh, the finger here does not have any supports that it can use. So it's still going to be kind of printing in thin air, which won't work. In this case, you would have to switch it to everywhere in order to get the support it needs. And then you're going to have an extremely hard time getting that off. So it's definitely worth looking at the preview before you print something where you're adding in supports to make sure that you're not going to have an issue getting it off. Um, I will tell you that with one of the uh, samples I did which I'll drop on here in a second uh, I did a just a test slice with normal touching build plate normal everywhere tree touching build plate tree everywhere and conical touching build plate and conical everywhere and the tree support did take the longest and use slightly more filament but not much and in most cases it's what I would have selected um, we'll talk about when you want to use conical here in a second but again I just wanted to stress the fact that it's worth looking at this in preview mode when you're using supports to make sure it's doing what you want it to do all right so let me move this model and bring another one in all right here we have a Raspberry Pi camera cover this is the front of it I have it scaled at 200% so I can show it as an example but when you're printing something that has a hollow bottom like this if you use normal supports, even touching build plate, it's going to fill up that entire thing uh, pretty much solid, uh, which you're wasting filament and time on. Um, this works okay for this type of print. Uh, if you go over to tree, uh, the tree is actually the worst type of support for this type of print just because it is using more support. Um, but it does come off easier, um, but it, it's using more filament and it takes longer to print. That's where conical support comes into play. Uh, you have to have generate support set to normal. If you have it set to tree, you won't be able to see it. Um, but if you go down to experimental, you'll see enable conical support. Then you can play with the different angles. Uh, typically 60% is okay, but let me show you what that does going from the bottom it's creating a rough surface kind of like what tree supports does but it's getting the bare minimum on the plate and then as you go higher where it needs to actually start going out to support the print it starts to actually add that angle in so that when it gets to where it's actually adding the print it's the full width so in this example when i ran the test earlier going from normal to uh, the conical support it used three grams less of filament so going from 25 to 22 grams of filament and took about 10 minutes off of the print time uh, this is a simple print uh, but if you're looking at larger prints or a large quantity of prints it can really add up but this is i'm hoping it comes out of experimental here pretty soon uh, though it does work just fine uh, but if you're doing any type of print where you've got a large open bottom surface like this, I would look at conical supports over tree or normal. But again, you won't see it unless you have normal selected. If you have tree supports selected, it won't be here. So you have to have uh, supports enabled and normal selected. Uh, if you don't have the supports enabled, again, it won't be here either. All right, so I put that fan duct cover back in here to use as an example. If we scroll down, you'll see that it's doing the same thing here. It's just creating the shell in the places where it's needed instead of filling this entire thing up solid and then coming up and expanding out where it needs to to create the supports. Uh, in this case, I still think tree supports is a little bit easier because uh, it comes off a bit easier, uh, but this one is still going to be a lot better than just normal. Um, 
I guess at the end of the day, my go-to is tree supports. And then if that doesn't work, I start looking at conical or normal, but I try to avoid using normal unless there's a reason I have to, because the other two provide more value and typically use less filament and are easier to remove. All right, so that was just a quick high level overview of the three types of supports. You've got normal, tree, and conical. If you'd like any more detail on those or like me to do any specific videos drilling into those further, uh, go ahead and let me know in a comment below. Um, like I said, I will link to the video that I did on custom supports below as well, so you can see those. I didn't think it was worth covering that too much in this video, uh, just because I already did a full video dedicated to them. But yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord. Thanks. All right, so that was the overview of the current support options in Cura. Uh, like I said, I primarily use tree support, uh, but in some cases I do use conical. Uh, I don't really use normal supports much anymore. Um, I just prefer tree just because they're easier to get off, or conical if you're trying to reduce the filament for larger openings at the bottom. Uh, but if you have any questions about what I covered today or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.